It's been 1 year since Dwarf Fortress 0.50 was released to the world, and 11 years since I started playing the game, and in that time I've put a fair amount of hours into it, which makes it somewhat surprising that I'd never built a mountain home before. Sure, most of the first 5 years I played was spent pitting alligators against crocodiles in arena mode, and naming dwarves after my friends so that I could tell them about their in-game trials and tribulations, but that still leaves 6 years where I had at least half a clue what I was doing in the game where I didn't manage to lure a monarch to my fortress. But then, as I documented in my last video, that all changed with my most recent fortress, and the arrival of my king slash prisoner missed him. It took about 8 years of ascending the noble ranks and building up my industries to get him to arrive, but once he did, it was pretty easy to steal my dwarves artifacts and fulfill his room demands which led to me getting the notification that forms the basis of this video, the pursuit of a true mountain home. Following the lead of the Dwarf Fortress wiki, I'll drop a quick spoiler warning at this point, because I'll be talking about some of the parts of the endgame you might want to discover for yourself. With that out of the way, my plan to find the seven symbols, which are just items made of divine metal, and a true throne, which is just a chair made of either adamantine or divine metal, was to first tackle the many geodes I had littering my caverns before getting stuck into the unusual volcanic pillar proper. I started things off by digging paths from the safety of my fortress to cavern walls close to each geode, so that my soldiers wouldn't be at risk of wandering off and leaving my fortress exposed while my miners went to work. Of course, this safety measure was mostly for the dwarves back at home, so when forgotten beasts came calling, my soldiers still had to fight them off though neither of the forgotten beasts they faced really made an impact. In addition to defending the fortress from underground mega beasts, my soldiers also had to keep their eyes open for any demonic forces that might find themselves released from one of the geodes, but in the end the only geodude we faced was a lizard brute that wound up being more of a slipping hazard than a true threat. Outside of the forgotten beasts and the demon, geode hunting was mostly pretty safe, and I managed to get through the 21 geodes I had tracked down on my map in a little under 2 hours. Of those geodes, 16 were completely solid, 2 were filled with magma, 1 was filled with water, 1 had the demon we killed, and 1 contained 2 divine metal artifacts, a bracelet and an amulet, which meant that my wish list was now down to 5 symbols and 1 true throne. Fortunately, I still had the unusual volcanic pillar to go through, and even more fortunately, I had found the top of it protruding into my third cavern layer when I was digging up geodes nearby. Because it was half embedded into the cavern wall, I was able to dig out a safe little airlock area where I could keep my soldiers between any loose demons and the outside world. Once it was set up, I got my miners to start digging back and forth across the pillar to create a strip mine that would reveal any treasure pockets in amongst the jewels and obsidian. And sure enough, after digging through a very minor water pocket, we stumbled across some blue metal trousers that brought our symbol count to 3. Our good luck took a bit of a hit when one of my miners dug the path right into a magma pocket that blocked her into a corner, and then took a much larger hit when another miner dug into a separate magma pocket that wound up killing the first miner and forcing an evacuation of the airlock. Though our furniture and bridges were destroyed by the magma, it was trivial to rebuild when the magma finally chilled out, and we were soon back at it digging in the pillar. The next problem we encountered was of the demonic variety, but while it did kill one of my miners pretty quickly, the other spared my soldiers the hassle of walking over by killing the hair brute with a swift pickaxe to the neck. Having regular disposable civilians killing allegedly ultra-powerful demons made me a little bolder in my plans, and so I told my miners to be a little less cautious and to just clear out the entire west side of the pillar to set it up for digging down. And as my miners bravely went to work on the front lines for my plan, I was rewarded for my risk taking with an invisible flashing metal dagger that brought our divine metal symbol count up to 4, which meant we were officially over halfway to becoming a mountain home. But once the top floor of the pillar was clear, the treasure we needed to find was now below us which meant revealing the magma from the floor below so that I could release water that would turn it into obsidian so that we could dig down safely. Despite setting a water system up and getting everything ready for this plan to go ahead, I for some reason thought I should just dig down in the more solid looking area to the north of the magma to see what it was like down there. Which of course unleashed the echo of a forgotten divine retribution, aka an angel known as the Champion of Udma. While it appeared imposing with all of its divine metal armor and fighting skills, 
It turned out that being made of ash isn't very structurally sound, and it was quickly splattered across the floor of the airlock. Because its armor was meltable at the smelter, unlike the artifacts I had been collecting, I took the opportunity to melt it down into bars, which I then turned into a throne, which ticked off a pretty major part of the whole seven symbols and one true throne deal. With that out of the way, I could resume my flooding experiment, which, after a couple tries, successfully turned a big chunk of the layer below into obsidian, and once it was obsidian, descending down the pillar was just a matter of digging it back up. My hastiness got my miners in a little bit of trouble when I asked them to dig up some floor that was actually hiding a lizard monster, but at the same time, it was mostly safe down there now, and I was racing to get my final treasures. As the lower level was revealed, I quickly found two flashing metal gloves, one right and one left, and then a flashing metal flail, which altogether brought the total number of symbols we had found up to seven. Which meant that, after playing Dwarf Fortress for so many hours over so many years, I had finally built up a fortress worthy of being called a mountain home and it had only really taken the lives of a couple miners and 25 hours or so. And my king, whose health I had been somewhat worried about in my last video, had made it through to the end, and will now need to adjust his will to account for his vast amount of divine metal belongings and his new friends. Thanks for watching, an extra thank you to those of you who support me on Patreon, and I'll see you next time.